to him. Okay, now can you tell me about Angel of Death and how this project came about? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was working on a project with uh, Michael Stratford and Robbie Huckle at Sony, and we were uh, discussing our favorite comic writers, and Brubaker's name came up. Uh, we'd been reading the Criminal series, and to me, the Criminal books just made sense online. It made sense as a serial. It reminded me of the old Shadow series and Dragnet and the radio. And Stratford and I started talking about how we might be able to pull Brubaker in to do a serial online and create something really substantial, a noir, a crime thriller, something character-driven. And uh, they'd already been talking to Zoe, who we loved, and just started that conversation going. And then it just sort of happened. Brew Baker was very interested in it. We got a script written. We were up and running probably within two months. And um, it was a fantastic process, really quick. Why did you think Zoe Bell was the perfect woman for the Angel of Death? I mean, what was it about her that like really played into this? Well, I'd seen her. She was really standout in Death Proof, you know. And um, I had been a Xena fan, and of course she was in the background in, in she wasn't a, uh, an actress in that show, but after seeing her in Tarantino's film, it was clear what she could do. And the idea was, because this was a, a noir, a crime noir, we really wanted to do homage to the, like a Lee Marvin, like point, point blank, where the action goes on and you don't cut away from it. You see it. You, the fighting hurts. The fighting is very, it's visceral. It's physical. And so we brought that to the project, and that's exactly what we wanted. We didn't necessarily want to have to sub out or use someone else. So Zoe kicked ass and got her ass kicked quite literally you know through through the whole shoot so you have Doug Jones and you have uh, Ted Ramey what was it like to get these guys and what was it about them that also played into their characters I mean this is a pretty exciting project with all these people on board yeah absolutely um, it was an honor to have Ted come in you know and it was and it was a gag for us because of course um, all of his lines are covered up with masking tape as he's abducted and thrown into a trunk dragged out to a field and assassinated so that was a joy to be able to do that um, and also with Doug, you know, I'd, I've again been a fan of Doug's for a long time. And, uh, um, you know, my business partner and I, Aaron Sims, have been, uh, we were at Stan Winston's together and then uh, we were, uh, started our own company, the Aaron Sims Company, an artist and director's cooperative. So we do a lot of design, uh, character design. And we know Doug because he wears a lot of, uh, a lot of suits, a lot of suit work, which is our business. And getting to work with Doug without makeup was fantastic. To be able to see his expressions, to be able to see, what he's like as a person and not completely in a mask um, was the goal for me uh, and we got to do it 100 percent we created a great character for him and he uh, and he really took it to a whole new level so it was fantastic working with him now how does this film as like a cohesive one like feature length movie play different than it did on the net when it was webisodes uh, the this, this series is designed uh, with breaks in it like a traditional radio broadcast um, and, and it has a, a slightly different story than the feature does. And, and we designed it as a feature because we wanted to release it on DVD and you know, increase our budget. So um, this, we built the series knowing that we would add some things in that were not going to be included in the series. So it does play a little differently. Now, can you talk about the storyline? And is this something that you guys are going to con continue to do with Zoe Bell, where you make like two or three or four of these and like continue it? Because I mean, it's hugely successful on Crackle.com. Absolutely, it's part of something that I'm calling Crime Town, and very much like Ed Brubaker's um, Criminal series, um, a, a lot of characters walk in and out of different episodes, and in the same way. Um, our vision is to create a universe where different characters um, can mink, you know, co-mingle, um, although we focus on a specific character for each series. Uh, and then these will also be released on DVD, and um, this is one in a part of a series. Now, working on the web, are you able to have more freedom with what you want to put into the show, or is it still kind of something where you have to watch, like, the rating and that kind of business? You know, the internet didn't really have anything to do with the content of it because, um, you know, the studios and distribute, uh, distributors are, are well aware that the, the uh, different modes of distribution are merging. So it really was a factor of having to deal with the studios more so in terms of content than dealing just with the internet. Yes, you can put anything on the internet, but if you want people to get behind you and support you, it has to fall within a certain range. This show is it's a fairly brutal show, but um, we were supported all the way through throughout by the studio, and there wasn't anything that we were looking to put online that was not going to be appropriate for you know, a, a rating, a standard R rating. Can you talk about one of your favorite scenes in the film or what your favorite aspect of the entire I think really the best part of the show for me was bringing this idea to 
a big studio and having them fall in love with it within three sentences and really get behind it and, and love Brubaker as a storyteller, love Paul Etheridge who directed the show. And it came together so quickly, um, there was no fighting, it was easy to do. And for me, having the studio get behind that process was a joy. We were scripting within two or three months, then we were up and shooting a couple of months later. And Sony has been just a wonderful partner throughout the whole process. Okay, and can we talk about Sucker Punch and Clash of the Titans? Are you willing to talk about those? Um, I, 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 we can probably, yeah, you guys, because you guys will edit, right? So you'll cut some, certain things out. Or... Totally separate from the yeah. stuff. No, I'm. How did you know about Clash of the Titans and Sucker Punch? Oh, <laughs> okay. And I was like, oh wow. Well, first of all, what exactly is going on with Clash? <laughs> Who was or him? <laughs> Oh, no, we're interested in that. What are you talking about? No, we're no, no, no. Fans of Crackle. Yeah, yeah. Don't tease me like that. I love Crackle. It's my favorite website. But, no, I, we have to ask those questions because people want to know what is going on with these two movies. What exactly, what can we expect out of Clash of the Titans? Um, you know, working with Louis is a joy. And Aaron Sims and Louis Leterrier have a great relationship that they've, they've built over, uh, over the Hulk, the Incredible Hulk, which Aaron designed. And again, Louis brought Aaron onto this project to help realize what these creatures were going to look like. And there are a ton of creatures in this movie. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be a real big ride. It's going to be a blast. Now, are you doing stop motion to kind of get into the theme of the last film? Or is it going to be CGI? Or how are the creature designs going to work? There are a lot of nods to, to Ray in this movie. And I know that uh, they consulted with Ray, of course, as you would have to. But um, I, I can't talk about any of the details on it because that I don't know. Okay, and what about Sucker Punch? I know I don't know when this is starting or when this is getting going, and what exactly is it about? Uh, I, you know, the guys are here for Comic Con. I think they're doing a, a Watchmen panel here, and I know that they're up in uh, on in Canada getting ready to begin shooting. But um, I, I think Zach is an incredibly talented guy, and I, I, I think this project in particular is really going to break away from anything he's done before and just be fantastic. I can't talk about any of the details, but um, Aaron Sims has been a huge part of it as well, along with Rick Carter and uh, DJ and th th um, Wes and Zach and Debbie are a joy to work with as well. I mean, that, that filmmaking core as a team um, is just outside of the Hollywood system. These guys know what they're doing and they're enjoying doing it and having a great time. And this, this story in particular is, I think, going to surprise everyone. What was it about the script that made you want to make that movie? Um, which, the Sucker, Sucker Punch? Yeah. I know why you working with Zach, well, working with Zach specifically, um, you know, and his team. I mean, often uh, there are a lot of politics involved in putting films together and getting things done. And uh, in their group, they're just such a tight family that uh, it's a joy to work with. And, and, that's, and that's really why we really wanted to jump on board, because it was uh, a, a real, a great family group to work for. Thank you so much. Sorry, I couldn't